43-year-old Nikki Kirkland wears a wig most of the time, but not when she gets home. She was diagnosed with alopecia at the age of 21. Her condition is scarring, which means her hair loss is permanent, something that has taken her two decades to come to terms with. I had a friend, it was a, she was a very good friend at the time. We don't see each other very much now. But I've never forgotten, I got my first wig. We were going out that night. I felt quite good when I put it on, put some makeup on, thought, yes, I'm ready to go. And then she came up home and the way she looked at me, it was like she thought I was a freak, and that really hurt. Hurtful remarks, she continues to battle. You, you get people that they'll look at you and then they'll say, oh, I'm ever so sorry, are you going through chemo? And it's those kind of comments that you sometimes don't know how to deal with them. But Nikki's experiences are not uncommon. Although there's no data on exactly how many people are diagnosed with alopecia, a US study finds around 2% of the population has had, currently has, or will have alopecia areata. If those figures were true here in Jersey or in Guernsey, that could mean just over 3,000 people are or will be affected. It does, I like that one. And the way in which people are affected is the focus of a Jersey it's support really group. Nice. And your natural hair was longer. My natural hair was longer. Down, down there, was it? Look at this rocking chick. The group meet every month and share their personal experiences. When you're first diagnosed, you lose your confidence. I mean, you don't want to go out. In my case, it's sort of, it goes from here to here is bald. But you just don't want to go out with little strands of hair, you know. But even going out in a wig, you think everybody's looking at you, you know, you have to get used to it. You look in the mirror and, like, I'd lost my eyebrows, my eyelashes, and you have, like, when you've got no makeup on, it's like it's not you staring back at you, yeah. it's really just like an alien person staring back at you, and you don't feel you, and you're like, hang on, where have I gone? Yeah. You're still there inside, but you don't realise how important eyebrows are. You don't realise how important eyelashes are because your eyes get constantly full of dirt and it's like you're like always there digging eyes and people are like, what are you doing? I'm like getting dirt out of my eyes. But not everyone who comes to the group has alopecia themselves. My son, he's a young man. He more or less doesn't talk about it, not even to us, his parents. It would be a lot easier for everyone, I think, if we could just just discuss it and see how we can help him. But helping men is something the group's organiser, Elena, says they are struggling to do in Jersey. A lot of people would maybe perceive that it's a lot easier for men because we see male pattern balding, but it's completely a different kettle of fish. And at the moment, I don't have any men coming to our group. Um, and I, I'd really love to because I know there are men out there who are really suffering with alopecia. We can hide it if we want to because we've got amazing wigs now. The technology for wigs is fantastic, but I think it's a lot harder for men. Still, a hard mental battle all the same for these women who are now calling on the government to provide some counselling for islanders suffering Ooh. with alopecia. Do you know what? This is I thought I was from the 80s. Yeah! <laughs> In the meantime, they look and lean on each other to remember that hair doesn't define beauty. Anagiri, ITV News. <laughs>